Today we're going to look at the beast handler's strengths and weaknesses, so things that each path is generally good at doing, what it's meant to do, and also things that it struggles against. So let's start with the water beasts. The idea behind them is being able to one-shot big blues like Moabs, ZOMGs, and eventually bats, which is only the second tower in the game to do that, by the way. Their damage comes from two sources. Number one is the sharks pulling balloons down into the water, but while the animation is happening, they bite the balloons and start shaking their tails. That animation is a damage per second effect. Effect, and that DPS effect is absolutely broken, especially on the tier 4 Orca. So let me give you guys the example of the tier 5 Megalodon, which costs over $130,000, and as you guys have probably seen by now, it can one-shot the Bad Balloon. The Orca costs $20,000, and it can literally pop a bat by itself. So as the Orca is attacking, it attaches itself to the Bad Balloon and starts moving its tail, which is the DPS effect that does 6,000 damage. This effect, by the way, is done in an area around the Orca, so what you guys are looking at is a non-merged $20,000 tower that almost single-handedly took down 5 bad balloons. This is beyond broken. The Melopan dinosaurs are slow attackers but they do big damage. So their weakness is fast and spaced out balloons. Like for example, if we send in 5 pink balloons which are spread out, the Adasaurus is going to leak most of them. But if we have them clumped together, then it performs a lot better. This is why dinosaurs are amazing versus the ceramic waves in round 63 for example, where the T-Rex just 2 taps the entire wave. Now a cool thing about the dinosaurs is that they can be buffed with an overcome clock NG which compensates for the lack of attack speed and I also noticed that combining them with the relentless glue is actually a pretty good idea because they gain increased damage to stun balloons which the glue does but it also slows down the moabs and all balloons in general giving the dinosaurs time to deal with everything and making up for the fact that they have slow attack speed. The bottom pad are the air beasts which were designed with the idea to stall balloons and set them up for your other towers while they themselves do the least damage out of all three pads. As they get upgraded they can pick up bigger and stronger balloons so it's probably a good idea to have them set on strong. Even though the entire path is decent, I found that the lower tier beasts are a little underwhelming. So for example, getting the tier 2 horned owl gives camel detection, but this thing costs $1400 and it can't even deal with the camel balloons in the 30s. Or the fact that the tier 4 giant condor cannot target lead balloons, but it can pick up BFBs. I also found that their pierce, or the amount of balloons they can pick up, is really important to their power. So naturally the tier 4, which only costs $8000 and can pick up BFBs, or the tier 5, which costs $30,000 and can pick up almost anything are really value upgrades for the money. Now there's this cool trick which is giving your birds global range. So whenever you merge them the birds can now see balloons which are inside the range of other merged beast handlers and this goes for their target indicators as well. You can move it in the range of other beast handlers. So if you get a few of them you can easily provide full map coverage for your tier 4 and tier 5 air beasts and make them even more useful. 